Facebook too. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Jana Mazurkiewicz Mejsarosz. I run the Yiddish Arts and Academics Association of North America here in San Diego. And it's a big pleasure to have Corina with us. Uh, lots of our participants of this meeting have been looking forward uh, to hear more about this hot topic of Yiddish theater under communism in Romania. And Corina is the best person in the world to, to talk about it. You will soon see uh, yourself why. <laughs> Uh, so she is an associate professor of German at the University of Mississippi. And uh, I have to mention a few of her publications, which are uh, Against All Odds, Subversive Spaces in National Socialist Germany, also very interesting. And she also co-edited um, Secret Police Files from the Eastern Bloc Between Surveillance and Life Writing and Cold War Spy Stories from Eastern Europe. So it all sounds uh, extremely interesting uh, to me and hopefully to you too. And today we, you can, I will ask questions and then you can also ask your questions about the theater in Romania under communism. Uh, so let me mute people who are not muted yet. Uh, and then I, I start with the same boring question that I always start with. <laughs> What brought you to the topic of your research? And is there anybody else uh, doing in the world doing the same research that you know of? <laughs> well, first of all, thank you, Jana, for the invitation mm -hmm. and for the very kind introduction. Um, I don't know that any, I'll start with the second question. So I am not aware of anyone else in the world uh, trying to uh, research the um, cultural history of the of Yiddish theater, of the Yiddish theater in Romania, that's called the, the um, Jewish State Theater. So TES um, is the acronym for that. So I am not aware of that. And I have been at this for 15 years now, not continuously with serious breaks in between, um, but just focusing on this as my main research um, since 2015. Um, and I'd be really interesting to hear from people who are doing, uh, who are interested in the Yiddish theater in Romania in um, any of its forms, pre-Second uh, World War, post-Second World War, but I'm, I'm not aware of that. Um, now to come back to your first question about how I got um, to be interested in this, um, I am by training a German scholar. And when I was in graduate school um, working on my dissertation, I was writing about um, the Jewish Cultural Association of Berlin, which existed in Germany from 1933 until 1941. Um, and during one of my classes uh, that I was taking on antisemitism, we read Hannah Arendt and I was struck by her claim that by 1941, Romania was the most uh, antisemitic country in the world. And being Romanian, being born and raised in Romania, I felt very bad because I had no idea about the context that had made Aaron make such a claim. Hmm. So um, I started reading about it and, and delving into um, Romanian Jewish history, realizing that I knew pretty much nothing about it. Um, I didn't even know that my favorite author as a teenager uh, was Jewish. Um, I had read all his novels and his plays and it, you know, they had all been published under communists when I was growing up, but it was never mentioned that he was Jewish. Um, and then I remembered from my years in Bucharest as an undergraduate that there was the Yiddish state, the, the, the Jewish state theater in Bucharest. Um, I had never attended a performance there during my time in, in, in Bucharest, even though I went to the theater quite often. Um, but I started looking for information on it and I came across uh, Israel Berkovich's book about the theater that was in Romanian. So this was the, well, the first version came out in 1976 in Yiddish, the second one in Romanian in 1982, and then they re-edited the Romanian version in 1998. Um, and I ordered both of them. So the, the Romanian version from 1982 and the Romanian version from 1998 because um, I thought it was somehow improved and, and you know, the research had been continued. Um, but that was not the case. So the only, the only changes in the second Romanian edition were just um, like 
all the ideological chunks. So every time she said, you know, due to the party and the state, this and this had happened, those had been taken out. And then the list of performances had been updated. So it had been brought um, to date, that would have been 1997, right? Because Berkovich's book ends in 1975. And then, so they had the, um, like the, the list of, of works that had been performed during that. Um, and after I read that book, I that I had to learn Yiddish um, on my own. I mean, I was a graduate student at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, but Madison didn't have a Yiddish um, program at the time. It does now, which makes me very happy. Um, so I contacted one of my professors from Madison. He was a linguist. Um, and I asked him, okay, so where do I start? Like, I don't know anything, but I know I need to learn this language because I really want to see what happened to the theater uh, after 76 when Berkovich's book ends. And I would also like to know what really happened during the times that he covered that fall under the communist regime, because instinctively I felt that there must've been more things than the things that he could write about. Um, so he pointed me into the direction of uh, Weinreich and I ordered the book and I started learning uh, Yiddish. I never um, attempted to speak it. I just wanted to be good enough at it so I could read in it and like, you know, read the, the older text and read the literature um, in the original. And that's how I started. You're muted. Yeah, yeah. Now I see. <laughs> Thank you very much. And now we're digging in. I would like to learn more detail. So, um, this Yiddish performance, did you later on go to the theater? And um, how yes. often did you go? What did you see? Tell us about uh, your experience. The moment I decided that I was going to um, research this um, was actually fortunate because I was on the verge of finishing my dis writing my dissertation. So I applied for a postdoc to Bucharest um, at the New York College. Um, an Institute for Advanced Study, and my proposal, my, my a topic proposal was to research the Yiddish, the, the Jewish State Theater in Bucharest. Um, and I got the scholarship and I went to Bucharest for a year between October 2005 and July 2006. And I went to every single performance they had that year. Um, and I saw things in Yiddish and I saw things in um, Romanian on the, on the stage, on Tessa's stage. Um, I saw what was, there were two great, perfor I mean, performances that were famous in Bucharest and that were, um, you know, getting tickets wasn't the easiest thing at the time. And um, the one performance was, um, well, in, in, in English translation, that would be Tonight Lola Blau. Um, and um, the second one was uh, an adaptation of um, Anne Frank's diary um, in a very postmodern staging by uh, Alexander Hausvater. And I enjoyed both of them. And uh, I mean, th those were the highlights. There were also performances that were less impressive. Um, but what struck me was the fact that Yiddish wasn't really playing such a big part um, in the theater. To, it was Jewish culture in Romanian, right? So, I mean, topics were Jewish, some of the literary works were Jewish, um, but people kept referring to it as the, you know, this is a Yiddish theater, this, you know, we're doing Yiddish. It's like, well, okay, I don't quite understand how that's possible given the fact that you don't have, I mean, at that point in time, there was two, two Yiddish speakers in the theater. Um, only one of them had grown up speaking Yiddish. The second one had learned the language as a young woman when she had joined the, the ensemble. But at least, you know, they, they had the language, right? But everyone else on the, um, in the ensemble at the time did not have functioning um, language skills, right? So they were learning the lines and um, 
then they were just memorizing them, delivering them on stage, and that was it. And in some cases, it showed, right, that it wasn't quite, the performance wasn't the same for somebody who felt it and, and spoke, like when, when Rudy Rosenfeld spoke Yiddish, right, you felt it, he had grown up in the language, and it didn't come across as something memorized, right? Whereas with, with younger actors, um, it was it was different. Um, but yes, I did. I, I went to the theater and every time I'm back in Bucharest, I try to see a show. Um, and I went back to Europe to do sort of very in-depth research on the theater um, between 2015 and 2017. And, um, Every every chance I had to go to Bucharest during those years, I went and I and I saw a show at the at the theater and I participated in 2016 at the first edition of um, Test Fest, which is the new um, you know Yiddish theater festival that that's been initiated um, in Bucharest. Um, we were talking earlier about the Goldfaden Festival that started in Yash in the early 2000s. Um, and that was 2002 to 2005. Um, and then there was a long break until uh, 2016 when, when Test Fest uh, was initiated. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, tell me more about this emphasis of, on Yiddish. Was it maybe from the times of communism? Because, you know, under communism, I imagine like in Poland, that was the case that everything Hebrew and religion was fair and Yiddish was the only thing in Judaism that was really supported, secular Yiddishism. So was this emphasis on Yiddish uh, or kind of relict from these days? I, I mean, the theater was created, right, as, as the theater in, um, the theater of a minority, right? So it was supposed to be in the language of the minority and address the minority, just like the German language theater um, existed for the German minority and the Hungarian language theater for the Hungarian minority in Romania. So definitely, right, it was it was supposed to be a cultural outlet for um, the minority. Um, but with the majority of the Jewish population of Romania leaving Romania during uh, communists already by the mid 1970s, um, the problem of the language is acute. Um, because, I mean, in the 1970s, right, you still had Jewish actors, but they weren't necessarily Yiddish speaking um, Jewish actors, right? So they were Romanian Jews, but they spoke Romanian. They didn't speak Yiddish, um, but they wanted to, to perform on the, on, the, on the stage of the, um, of the state theater because, right, it, it was a theater of, of their um, culture. And some of them learned the language, some of them did not. Um, and sort of the model perpetuated, there was no instruction in Yiddish language in, at the theater. I mean, in the 19, in the late 50s, early, yes, in the late 50s, there was something organized at the theater to actually educate young actors to perform um, on the, the stage of, of the um, state theater. So, they were given language courses. They were given uh, like courses in Jewish history, like Jewish Romanian history, and then um, um, Yiddish language literature. And on top of that, sort of the regular acting that, that anyone uh, would have to attend if they were studying at the um, Academy for Theater and, and um, Film. So that produced a group of young young actors in the 70s who had learned the language so they felt strongly about the theater um, expressed in Yiddish. So when the audiences start to disappear and also again they were Jews coming to see the theater and supported the theater as an outlet of um, ethnic cultural identity but the audiences themselves don't spoke, didn't speak Yiddish anymore, or didn't didn't have that strong connection that the, the earlier generations had had. So in the mid seventies, the theater gets um, simultaneous translation, and then you had like headphones in the playhouse, and 
somebody would read the text um, in Romanian um, in, the, in the headphones. Now, till the end of, well, till the mid 80s, plus minus, early 80s, let's say early 80s, texters still performed um, exclusively in Yiddish. That means you take a, a text that wasn't written in Yiddish, you translated it in Yiddish, and then somebody actually read a Romanian translation of that text. So if the text existed in, so if it was a Romanian text that they performed, right, um, the, the woman in the headphones read the original Romanian, right, and people on stage performed in Yiddish. So the disconnect was strong, right? If you had, let's say, um, an American play, right? They performed um, played again sang into Yiddish and then from you, the English into Romanian. You, I think you were frozen for a little bit. So can you oh. repeat, please? Okay, mm -hmm. where did I freeze? What was the last part that people heard? The I think just the last sentence or two. <laughs> right. So if, Onama. two. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you had a um a play that was originally written in Romanian, right? Is this where I broke off? Right? They would so they would translate the text into Yiddish and they would perform it in Yiddish. But what people heard in the headphones was the Romanian text, uh, right? We all know that some things get translation matter at that point in time because they in, in the headphones you heard the um, the Romanian original. So to some extent, whatever happened on stage, the language right wasn't relevant because that wasn't necessarily what the people followed, right? They followed that which they heard in their headphones. Now, if you have a text that was originally written in a different language, and I took Woody Allen's Play It Again, again Sam, because that was performed at PES, um, they translated it into Yiddish from a Romanian translation of the English text, right? So then, but then that Romanian translation wasn't used for anything else other than, you know, the, the reading in the headphones so that the audiences could follow it. Um, and it, it became problematic, um, right, in terms of the language. But um, for the longest time, Peter held on. Nama has a question. I. I did they choose that, the play it again, Sam? Did they choose it because Woody Allen is Jewish? How did they choose what they were? I wish I could answer that. I don't know. Because um, even I, I've, I've been at this project for a long time, as I said before, but I have not gained access to the archives of the theater. So I don't know, I don't have any information on how things were chosen to be performed, uh, who made the decisions, what was censored, what was not censored, because I haven't seen that. Um, I have access, uh, and you know, that's what I, I'm working a lot with that. Um, I have access to the archives of the secret police in Romania. And I was hoping, to, and there is a file on the, on the theater, and Jana has a picture of the cover of those two boxes that to the to the theater she can share that with us later um, or she can do that um, and I was hoping to find in in the files of the Securitate some information so those are the two right so we have volume 10 on I guess the left-hand side, if you look at the screen, and then volume 11 on the right-hand side. Um, the Securitate um, had a file on the Jewish community in general, and um, two of these volumes 
are dedicated to tests. And these are the covers of those two volumes. And you can see on each of them, Teatro Levres de Stat, um, right? And there's no, um, there's where it says, okay, so above the D137 slash 10, there are two lines where we're supposed to, you, you can recognize the word data, which would mean date. Um, that's where you would have when this would, when the file was open and when the file was closed, but none of these mention um, any of that information. So um, I, I don't know for sure when the file was open, but since most of the information is from the 1970s, I believe that it is in the 1970s that they opened them and the file was never officially closed. Um, because the, the events in Romania just took people by surprise and then they just didn't bother to close the files. Um, so, so these are the, sorry, these are the only two existing uh, existing files or? Yes, are there, mm -hmm. so um, That's I strange have, because, yeah, in Poland you have tons of files. You have at least, I saw at least 50 or 60 files. On the theater, so, all of yeah. them on the theater? On the theater. So it's interesting to compare that in Romania, there were only two. Yeah, so there, there are only two. I mean, I uh, periodically I uh, request uh, from the center that, that uh, administers the, the files of the Securitate, I request for them to look again to see if any new files mm -hmm. have appeared or any new files. Right. But at this point in time, these are the only two that, that are available. And, and Okay, and are there any files on particular actors? Probably Berkovici had his own file. Berkovic Berkovich had a had a file, and I have uh, I've I've seen that file, um, and um, I can only assume that there are other um, actors or member of the um, of the ensemble that that had files. But I did not want to go in such a depth as to ask for the file of every person I can think of in connection to test because I spent quite a few years. Um, hoping that I would gain access to Tess's archives or to see what the theater has. And that hasn't happened. And then, you know, I, I need to finish this project. I, I need to, to start delivering on the promises I made for, for the uh, grants that I've received to do this research. So I decided, okay, I have to rethink my approach. I have to, to start writing something even without the, the, the art without access to the archives. So questions like the one um, Nama asked, right? How, you know, why, why perform a particular text? And so I assume that you wanted to ask something. Corinna, I oh. there you go. <laughs> this is I don't know, somehow at some point you all disappeared and <laughs> It's a mysterious case of Yiddish theater uh, in Romania <laughs> and the archives. The moment you start talking about the archives of theater, you yourself disappear. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so can I insert a joke here? In yeah. Romania? I'm like, you wonder who's listening in on this because as a good Romanian, you always suspect. Oh. So where, where was I? <laughs> yeah. kind of and you were just talking about how the only way you can get access to information is not from the archive of the test itself, but from, it's like, not this, but this from the Securitate files. So I was, you know, wondering uh, as a fellow Romanian, as somebody who's interested in the topic, but really knows nothing about it, are there other people out there in other countries who do research on, you know, a, the, you know, a theater that have just easier access, like Jana said, oh, she's amazed she has access to way more files because maybe there's something. No, but not from the theater. Everything is from the secret police archives. Okay. The same. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, because I mean, not every other country had a Jewish state theater, so yeah. <laughs> and that's also an iron, some irony. There is, you know, these countries in Eastern Europe, Romania, Poland, they have buildings, right? They had a um, translation system installed. They had state funding, but they didn't have Yiddish speaking actors and here in America you have Yiddish speaking actors but you don't have buildings you don't have state funding and you don't have a translation system that is ready for any every performance to um, to be used so isn't it an interesting there's, paradox that uh, there's a question yeah. I believe okay uh, yeah. in the chat Sorry, I just wanted no, to make, sorry. Yes, yes. Go ahead. I just wanted to make one or two comments plus mm -hmm. a question. The first okay. question is so th is the Yiddish theater still uh, alive in Bucharest? Is it still functioning? Don't know. Is it yes, on Yes, the answer to that is yes. Is it on a regular yes, It is still a state Yes, it is still a state funded institution. Um, it is supported financially by the city of Bucharest um, and they perform, I'm okay, not during the pandemic, but generally they perform, um, um, you know, every night, uh, like like their regular theater, they, they have um, the same building that they've always inhabited. Um, mm -hmm. That building was spared during the, the big construction projects that took place in Bucharest in the 1980s that destroyed mm -hmm. a lot of the former um, Jewish quarter, but that the, the street for the theaters on is was spared and the uh, Corina, you are freezing. I, I have a suggestion. Maybe you can uh, try to exit the Zoom and re-enter because you are freezing and we can't hear okay, you. Okay, I'll do that. Let's try that because okay, it would be I'll a shame. exit and come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I right. just wanted to make another comment when she comes back. Right, sorry about it. Unfortunately, we have no control over. I know. <laughs> but we will uh, we'll try this. Hopefully it will work. Uh, I can tell you how we met with Corinna first time. Uh, we corresponded for a long time because my topic of research is Yiddish theater in Poland under communism. And her topic is Yiddish theater under, uh, in Romania under communism. So it was an obvious shidduch in terms of uh, comparison the, our research um, details and results. Um, but then we met in Lisbon at the MLA conference. That was our first meeting in person. And we were um, a part of a bigger panel that talked about um, socialism and Yiddish theater and you know, it only gives us more material to work with uh, in the future. So uh, I hope we will meet again <laughs> and we could maybe have even a panel on Zoom uh, comparing different Yiddish theaters, you know, in different places. Um, uh, what is MLA? I'm sorry. Oh, um, how do you? Um, Modern Language Association. Uh, yeah. So that's a big conference that Okay, Corinna is back. Let's see. Hopefully this time it will work. Uh, okay. Yeah. Hello. Oh, you're there. Okay. So I was just I'm back. <laughs> Good. Just going to make a comment. Uh, I left Bucharest in uh, 63 mm -hmm. and to go regularly to the Yiddish theater. That's My parents did. Uh, from time to time, they would take me, and I still remember a performance, it must have been in 1960 or 61, of uh, the Three Penny Opera and Mickey Messer. They were singing Mickey Messer, and it was, I, I still remember it. It was a wonderful, wonderful uh, performance. I don't remember everything. And they had the headsets 
Mm-hmm. So you, my Yiddish was really not that good. So you, it would get translated into Romanian, except for the singing. The singing, they would just sing. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. And the, I, I remember the theater, and I remember it had lovely velvet seats. <laughs> I think these are what kids remember, right? <laughs> there are wonderful seats, and and the and yep. I took me two or three times to the Yiddish theater. And the reason I wanted to go was to listen to the headset because that was fascinating. Nobody had any. <laughs> <laughs> and so and my dad this knew the people. This was nine. This was in 1960, 1961, maybe 62. I can't remember the dates exactly. I was very young. But I remember my parents saying Sorry. that when we would you come out of the theater. 1960. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Corinna, maybe try without the video. I know it's not ideal, but we can help. So the other thing was that I do remember something being told when we'd come out of the theater to hurry up and to leave. And I'm presuming it had to be because apparently they used to, the Securitate would stand out there and they would check who was there. Because if you were a party member and you would go to the Yiddish theater, it was really not a great idea. You would be in big trouble, probably. So that that's another thing I remember. You know, my parents were not party members, so it didn't really matter. But uh, it, it was, I loved it. I really loved it. But there was always this thing that you didn't talk about going there and you didn't really tell people and only amongst ourselves, amongst the family. And I'm sure they, they checked you out. And my dad knew some of the uh, people who wrote for the Yiddish theater and they were very much persecuted at one time. I don't know names, I don't know who it was, I have no idea. Oh, but, what interesting. How would that be if the theater was supported by the state? Maybe that particular uh, performance or? The performances were in hey. Yiddish, it was a big cast. It was something many, many Jews in Bucharest supported. We'd go, I don't know how you paid, what you paid, I have no idea. But it was very popular. Uh, But people who were party members or people who didn't want too many people to know that they were Jewish, they probably never attended because it was dangerous. Hmm, interesting. Corina, can you try to speak up now? Can, let's see if we can hear you. Yes, um, I, I mean, there's several things in the, in the information that are actually surprising to me um, because I have not, not seen, I've not heard of the Yiddish theater already having had set found as early as the 1960s. So this is new information from the 1970s to allow um, the theater to introduce headphones. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm looking for a computer cable to see if that strengthens. yeah. Yes, I, somebody is suggesting that you can move closer to the modem. So in that, um, mm-hmm. I, that, um, okay, just give me a second. I'm going to change computer. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, sorry about Are it, you, but it, hopefully it's going to work. Just a second. Just a second, Yana. It's fine. It's fine. No worries. Uh, yeah, we'll try. We'll try. Because it's such an interesting topic. It would be a shame. Uh, so Nama, can you tell us about your experiences in Romania in the meantime? At the first, 
at the first, so I, I was there for the first two conferences on Yiddish theater in the early okay. 21st century. And then, I am back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, and, and then there was a conference on film, Eastern European film. And I was there talking about later. Uh, there were more Yiddish films than I realized, and they got a very good people. People came. It was somewhere in Transylvania, in a small town in Transylvania. This conference. Mm. Uh, one of the things I remember the most is that I said to some young people that there had been a conference in uh, in Yash, and that at one time there were 137 synagogues in Yash. I mean that's. Yeah. 137, and these young people who were very polite young people didn't believe me. Wow. They, they, they finally, they looked at each other. They finally said, oh, I mean, they didn't want to fight with an old lady, you know, but they didn't believe it. Wow. All right, so let's hear Thank more you. about it. Yeah, there is a question from Elizabeth Schwartz. How was the Soviet restriction on religion and religious congregating reflected in the congregation around Jewish culture? Okay, so um, the Soviets didn't have that much of a saying in Romania as they did in uh, some of the other uh, East European countries. So. I have not found a single document that points in the direction of Soviet involvement or implication uh, with the theater or Jewish culture in general in Romania. Now, the security. Sorry. Files, so, I should yes. have said, I should have, I, I'm sorry. I said communist because I, I think of all of these countries sort of being in the hegemony. But so, the, you know, the communist uh, repression of religious freedom. That's what I mean. Okay. Um, now, interestingly, the Jewish community in Romania is actually not recognized as an ethnic minority by the, by the Romanian state. They are defined as the uh, mosaic cult. So they are identified as a religious um, entity, but allowed to exist as a minority that doesn't have minority rights. Mm. Um, so, and that's, that's the, the entire, so throughout the communist years, that's how um, the, the community exists. And to this day, um, right, they carry this self-definition as, you know, they're the, the community of the mosaic cult. Um, hmm. So, and in terms of, I mean, for Romania, it's interesting because you had um, the chief rabbi, uh, Moses Rosen, who was the chief rabbi and was also the president of uh, the Jewish um, Federation. And, he, you know, he he was somebody who in his young years had been sympathetic to the left. And that's why they um, they allowed him to become the next uh, rabbi after the, the previous rabbi had uh, fled to the West and he lived a very long life. So he continued to be chief rabbi and, and president of mm -hmm. the Federation even after the, the revolution in 89. Um, so he, he, but he, he was somebody who's described uh, as a very um, authoritarian figure and he, he ruled with an iron fist, so to say. Um, and, you know, some people resented him for, for that and others said, well, that was the only way he could make sure that the community um, survived um, during communist. And um, he actually obtained certain things from the, um, the communist authorities in Romania that other communities uh, in Eastern Europe did not um, Receive so he, you know, the the Romanian Jewish community had a publication um, that was originally in, um, well, it was in in Romanian Yiddish, um, and then it became 
Romanian, Yiddish, and Hebrew, and then it became Romanian, Hebrew, and English. Um, so then he would give, um, like in, in his addresses to the community, he would talk about events in Israel and, you know, um, formulate prayers for the state of Israel and for the Romanian communist state. And so he, he, he walked the fine line um, between, you know, realizing what the community was worth to the Romanian authorities um, and sort of applying himself to the demands um, of the Romanian authorities. And there's this, this statement that he's supposed to have made um, after 1989, where um, he said that um, in order to save the community, uh, he would have become a fellow traveler of Hitler's if that would have been required. So in that sense, right, he, he, hmm. he worked together with the communist authorities to make sure that the community um, continues to exist in, in the country. And at the same time, I mean, he never um, made Aliyah, but he did oversee, so to say, um, as rabbi and president of the Federation, um, the, the exodus pretty much of um, Romanian Jews to Israel primarily. Mm. I have a picture of her. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yes. That's my that's my uncle and his son. This was in '64. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Very interesting. Maybe you can exchange information later on. That would be interesting. <laughs> that would be very nice. Yes, I would appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. I would like to go back to this uh, comment about uh, Woody Allen performances. Mm -hmm. Wasn't it just a big par part of like international fashion of staging movies and working with movie scripts on stage. Because I remember in Romania, when I was there, they, they also staged Driving Miss Daisy. Yes. This has so I think maybe that was just uh, this, how to, that was, you know, in general, in theater, people and asked how can we compete with TV <laughs> and very often uh, or, fa or movies and very often the answer is like oh we'll show the famous movies on stage and that was uh, in Poland also at that time kind of fashion to show movies on stage. Well I mean as, as far as I know played uh, Woody Allen wrote played again Sam as a Play, play before yes 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 so that's mm -hmm. to my knowledge that is what they use now the question mm -hmm. of how come you know they they performed an american contemporary artist at the at the time um in romania because that that those being the 70s romania had a, a certain opening to the towards the united states and um tess itself had been on tour in the united states in 1972 um, and had, mm -hmm. had performances on the East Coast and, and the West Coast and even in Canada. Um, and then, you know, when, when Nama gave her presentation on, on um, you know, writing her book, uh, she mentioned, you know, meeting or, or attending the performance of the theater uh, when they were in New York. Um, so the interesting thing about the theater in the, in the 1970s in particular is that the the authorities are using it um, sort of as a um, as a PR stand, let's, let's mm -hmm. say, right? So, I mean, the theater is allowed to go on three international tours. They go to the United States and Canada in 1972. They go to East Berlin in 1977 and they go to Vienna in 1979. Now, before that, it's actual first international tour was in 1968 to Israel. Um, so the theater is, is kind of a, a harbinger of, oh, look to how progressive we are and all these rights that the Jews are enjoying in Romania um, at a time when, when Romania really wanted to project a positive image um, you know, of itself in the Western world. And 
right? It, it allowed uh, immigration, but at the same time, it's like, look, you know, people don't really have to leave us because look at Jews. I mean, you have your own theater and, we, you know, you perform your own um, art and, you know, we promote your language and literature through this theater and we send the theater abroad. And there are, um, in, in the Securitate file, there are quite a few uh, informant, you know, informants notes about um, this, this sense of, um, envy that some of the American um, actors of the Yiddish stage um, harbored for uh, for the the actors in Romania because they had a stage, they had mm -hmm. an outlet, right? They had um, a secure existence, right? And that was something that you know um, actors of the Yiddish stage in the United States in the nineteen seventies did not have. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, a, a lot of these exchanges that, uh, you know, I, I found in the Berkovich archive, which is in Potsdam in Germany, and th there are letters that he has from, from different people in the United States who always tell him, you know, how lucky he is and how much they envy, you know, the Romanian Jews for having the theater. Right? So it kind of paid off. I mean, the PR stunt paid off because people they'd look at the theater and think, oh, you know, this, this, is, a, this is a wonderful thing. It's a state-funded institution that promotes maybe not Yiddish culture, but Jewish <laughs> for sure, yeah. <laughs> so. And can you tell us more about what's going on in the theater now? What do they do during the pandemic? So um, since the, the, the pandemic started, they've been really, really active, particularly on, on Facebook. So, um, they, they have both a Facebook account and a YouTube account. Um, and um, on the Facebook account, they post something every day. Mm -hmm. um, so it might be like a little sketch that, that the actors read and then there are um, <coughs> you know, animations with it or simply you know, the actors are at home with a cup of tea and, and they read a text or a poem. Um, or the musicians that are part of the, the Klezmer band that's associated with the theater now perform, you know, with the members of their families or, um, you know, different, each of them in their home and, and then just coming together. So they are being very active. Um, and um, last week, no, the, the, from the 25th to the 31st of May, they actually had, um, the, they held the Tess Fest uh, which is this this new Yiddish theater festival that was initiated in 2016 in Bucharest. Um, they um, broadcast on their Facebook site, um, you know, um, sort of the best moments of the previous editions of the festival. And then um, since 2000, so in 2017, and the first time it was celebrated in 2018, May 30th is um, the national day of Yiddish language, culture, and theater in Romania. Um, and that was celebrated with a lot of um, Itzik Munger because, it, you know, the th May 30th was Itzik Munger's um, birthday. Um, so in, in his honor, the day was chosen. And, you know, on, on the occasion of the day, they read a lot um, of Munger. And, and um, so they're staying active. Um, I, I don't have a sense of when or if the theaters are going to open anytime soon in Romania so that people can can go back to um, to the you know normal life of, of an artist but um, they are trying I guess to to keep their spirits high and also their audiences and and a lot of the the clips start with you know okay I, I want to bring a, a ray of sunshine into your day today so let me read this poem to you, let, let me recite this, let, let me share um, this performance. Um, the texts are not, ex I mean, the majority of them are in Romanian, right? So there's some Yiddish, but very little Yiddish um, that's used. Um, most of the texts I would say are by Jewish uh, authors, but not exclusively. I mean, they've also read um, Shakespeare or recited Shakespeare or, um, so it's, it's a mixture of, of, you know, culture that's being promoted, but they're staying active. And I remember when I was in Romania, there was some preschool or some 
um, school for Jewish kids attached to the theater. Yes, that still right? exists. Yeah, that still exists, but I cannot tell you anything about it. I, I don't have a sense of um, how popular it is, who is going there. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. just an interesting uh, <laughs> place to have this building and then the Jewish school attached to it. It looks like maybe the center well, of originally <laughs> originally the building which is which now houses you know partly the theater and partly the the um, daycare kindergarten that you mentioned was meant as a sort of community center. So Julius Barash, uh, um, the, so the, the building is now on the Julius Barash Street. Um, and he was, um, you know, a Jewish philanthropist who uh, erected the building so that it could uh, be used by the Jewish community for, um, you know, different purposes. And at some point in time, there was a, um, like a, a, a medical center for kids in there. I mean, we're talking pre-Second pre World War, uh, right? Because during the Second World War, um, there, the Romanian uh, authorities allow the existence of one theater. It's called the Barashelm Theater, Barashelm from Barash, Julius Barash, right? So, um, and that is, um, so it's the only theater for Jewish actors, artists in general, um, that's allowed to exist in the country. Um, I know that it's oftentimes it's referred to as, you know, the Yiddish theater during the Second World War. That is misleading because, um, well, performances were in Romanian, but that was by decree, right? Because the, the authorities didn't want to have to wonder whether they, um, you know, they're being uh, criticized in a language that they didn't understand and, 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 and couldn't control. But also the actors who actually find refuge in this theater are Jewish Romanian actors of the Romanian stage. So the none of the members of the traveling Yiddish language theater troops that existed in Romania in the interwar time actually find their way to this theater because they were not, by not being citizens or recognized as citizens even before the decree that resembles the Nuremberg laws in Germany that takes away their citizenship, right? They would have not qualified uh, as Romanian citizens even before that. So the performers of the Yiddish troops were actually deported to Transnistria. Um, um, Sevilla Pastor, who was one of the, the um, very important actresses of the uh, interwar time uh, in, in Yiddish theater and then became one of the important actresses of Tess, she was somebody, like her whole family was in the troupe, uh, in the theater troupe, and they, they got sent off to, to Transnistria. And so Barashem was, you know, the Jewish theater in, indeed, but it was not the Yiddish theater. Um, it was the, the theater that allowed Jewish artists to, to um, survive in, in wartime Bucharest. Um, I mean, Lenny Kahler was a star of the of the National Theater in Bucharest, and she wasn't allowed to perform anymore on the on the national stage. So she performed in Barashem. People went to see her because they wanted to see that famous actress, and they could only see her on that stage and and not in the regular theater. Um, and so that's the moment when. The, the hall becomes associated with the theater for the first time when the Barashom is, is, is hosted in this um, hall. And then it's, it remains like that. And at some point in time, there were two stages. There was a smaller stage upstairs and a, a larger stage downstairs. And during the, so during 44, 48, sort of the transition period between the end of the Second World War and, and the proclamation of the, um, of the Republic in, in Romania, various troops rent out one of the, the two halls in the Barashem and then perform. Some of them were shooting for art theaters and others were just performing vaudeville to, to get people to laugh and, and, and you know, try to make some money. So, and then once the theater is officially embraced by the state and then transformed into a, a national um, institution, then that building becomes their their playhouse and it's been ever since so 
Can you tell people who don't know who Barash was? Uh, Yulish Barash? Mm -hmm. So he was just a, a Jewish philanthropist in 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 um in a war book at the time. I mean, actually, like 19th century, going into the early 20th century uh, in Bucharest. And... Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, more questions. Who are the actors who play at the test now? Also, who forms the audience today? Is it numerically significant enough audience for the test not to worry about its survival? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, who are who were the audience? Sorry, I can you repeat the first part of the question? Let's let's divide it. Who are the actors who play at the test now? Okay, so um, some of the actors are um, Jewish actors. I mean, Romanian Jews, right? So they're ethnically Jewish. Um, others are ethnically Romanian. Um, there's even um, a young actress who is ethnic Romanian from Serbia, who hmm. emigrated to Romania after the um, after 1989 and performs um, on the Yiddish stage. And she's actually one of the few people who. I'm aware of that have actually taken um, Yiddish language classes during like, various summer schools in Europe so that you can actually work on, on, on her delivery and, and her language skills. Um, so the troupe is mixed in terms of, you know, ethnic background of the, of the, um, the actors. Um, it hasn't always been like that in the 1970s. So, um, 1971, there was one ethnic Romanian actor in the troupe. Um, and then that changes dramatically. And by 1984, um, the there were only four members of the, of the troupe who still um, had functioning Yiddish and the majority of the actors were ethnic Romanians. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and now the other question. Uh... Who forms the audience today? Um, members of the Jewish community still attend the performances. Um, it depends, I guess it depends on what's being staged, right? So the, the current uh, general manager of TESS is a very famous actress um, in Romania. Her name is Maya Morgenstern. Um, and a lot of people go to see her. And it's a lot easier to get tickets to see her perform on Tessa's stage than to get tickets to see her perform on the national theater stage in Bucharest, where she also, uh, she's also active. Um, so I think, you know, sometimes people are just, just, they just want to see her. So it's very much, to my mind, focused on this sort of star um, aura that she enjoys in, in Romania. And um, I was there for a performance in 2006 where she didn't, she, the understudy appeared on stage that night and there were some very angry ladies in the audience who felt the need to make their anger heard by everyone who was sitting next to them that Maya Morgenstern was not on stage. They had not been told that she was not going to be on stage and how come they were allowed to enter the building know it when the people in the theater knew that Maya Morgenstern was not going to perform that night. Um, so she, she does have a following so people go to see her. Um, other times, um, it, so they're like, they're famous um, directors who stage um, on Tess's um, stage. So then people will go to see their performance. And like Hausvater, Alexander Hausvater is somebody who draws a crowd again. Um, and he um, he works quite often with Tess. He, he, uh, his, his performances are always in Romanian. Um, but they're always um, on Jewish topics and, and the Shoah plays a very important part in, in, in the things that he stages. And his shows are so modern and experimental and avant-gardist for, for what's happening in, um, in Romania in terms of theater that people would go to see um, his, his, his um, 
stagings, you know, his, his plays. Um, well, yes, Tess, I mean, in terms of like remaining financially viable um, in today's world, it is, it, it's hard, I think it's going to be ever harder for the theater to, to remain relevant on, um, in the cultural landscape of Bucharest if they keep insisting on being a Yiddish theater because they're not. Um, I, I mean, open it up, define it as Jewish culture. And I actually looked, uh, looked at the sort of the yearly report that the theater has to, to produce and they have to upload it to, to their website. And um, in 2018 was the first time where the self-definition of the theater started in some of the, um, the paragraphs with, we perform in Romanian and Yiddish. In 2016, the theater still claimed that it performs um, the majority of its of its performances are in Romanian in in Yiddish, and that the emphasis on Yiddish was very strong. So they have moved away from that to some extent. I think what the theater needs is to just say, you know, they're they're a theater that promotes Jewish culture in any form or shape, I mean, regardless of the language, um, there shouldn't be this, this emphasis on the language because that makes it um, difficult. And I think in terms of talent and ability to perform, they can compete with, with other theaters um, in Bucharest. I mean, they, they have some, some talented um, young people um, and, you know, drawing, um, producers or directors who come to work, um, be it Roma Roma like, well, from Romania or um, international directors, that has proven uh, very beneficial um, for the theater, but they, yeah, they, they need to redefine um, what exactly makes them, uh, you know, a Jewish theater because the, at the, the, the way they advertise for themselves is, you know, we're the only minority theater in, in the capital city of Romania, which is true, right? Because the German theater is in um, Transylvania and the Hungarian uh, theater is in Transylvania, right? So looking at Jewish culture in a different way and, and make themselves the sort of the, the poster child of a more inclusive general Jewish culture. Yes, how interesting. So um, when it comes to the I, I university. Think Nama. Yeah, yeah, Nama. Has... Go ahead, go ahead, Nama. I was in Bucharest just a few years ago, just for a few days, and went to the synagogue, the big synagogue in Bucharest, on a Friday night. And there was a big congregation. I mean, bigger than I expected. Okay. A lot of young people, uh, a very lively dinner there afterwards. So do they, do people like that, and they were not, they were not Hasidim. I mean, they had mm -hmm. no reason to disapprove of theater. Do, do they consider that a Yiddish theater or a Jewish theater is, is theirs? What are they connection? I, I, mean, I know that this no connection, their emotional connection, maybe. Um, I know that the theater um, has a lot of outreach projects where, like, the theater encourages the theater uh, group of particular high schools in Bucharest to come and work with the theater and use the stage of the theater to, um, you know, put on their performances. And then there are, so, so there, there is a sense of reaching out to, the, to young people and, um, you know, recruiting them to come to the theater and experiment with the, with the theater and experience what TESS is all about. But I'm not sure you know, we're, like what, what the ethnic uh, background in those high schools are, I would venture to say they are, you know, mixed and then 
yeah, I, I, I don't have a sense of, of how that is, is playing out. Um, I also don't, I mean, when I was there, um, there were people in the audience, and this is 216, right? So it's, it's been a while now too. Um, at the festival, as so that first edition of the, of the um, Test Fest, yeah, the majority of the audience uh, was Jewish. Uh, it was the community and they knew each other and there was the sense of, oh, we're, we're amongst ourselves and this, this is an event for us to celebrate Jewish culture and the achievements um, that, that, you know, have been um, produced in this country and our contribution to, to a Jewish Romanian culture, right? There was that sense there. Um, but I've, I don't know how that continues into the larger community, the Jewish community or like the, in general. Not being Jewish myself, people are not always very open to my questions or answering them. There's, um, I, I've, I faced quite a, quite a bit of skepticism. Um, so, you were saying, Nama, during your presentation that, you know, you being part of, you know, you are Jewish and people still were suspicious of, of you know, your work when you were researching um, your book, um, not being part of the community and then also coming, so going back to Romania, well, but the first time I did it, I was a graduate student at, the Amer at an American university. Now I go back and I'm, well, I'm a professor at an American university. The levels get very complicated and some people just don't, they prefer not to come anywhere near me or answer questions or um, even talk to me just because they can't figure out why I'm doing what I'm doing. Why would I spend so much time trying to, to, to research this? Um, so. Actually, my favorite, in, in terms of like questioning what I'm doing, my favorite interaction was with um, an Uber driver in Tel Aviv two years ago, uh, where, so I went to Tel Aviv for four days to meet with this um, actress who lives there, who um, as a young woman performed with Tess um, in Romania. So I did not realize that the national day fell during that week and but all I had thought about when I had planned my trip to Israel was I don't want to be there during Eurovision because Eurovision was going to take place that year in Tel Aviv so I had planned everything really nicely around Eurovision I wanted to leave like the day before your the whole madness started and well but I arrived um on the national day. So this Uber driver was like, so you're here for the national day? No. You're here for your vision? No. Um, you're here because you're on vacation in Israel? I was like, no. Why are you here for? It's like, well, I'm here to interview this great actress who as a young woman performed in Yiddish theater. And like, he stopped the car, turned to me and was like, and you came to Israel for that? Let me tell you about Yiddish. I hate it for two reasons. It sounds like German. <laughs> so in my head, I was like, okay, I'm not going to tell him that I'm actually a German professor because he's not gonna take me to where I need to be. And I don't know my way around Tel Aviv to walk. <laughs> and the second one was like, well, and they're so like, you know, in Israel, everyone who speaks Yiddish is so conservative. I was like, okay, well, and then he asked me, so what do you, you know, why are you interested in Yiddish theater? Because you're not Jewish. Like, well, I'm, no, I'm not Jewish, but so then I started my whole, I was like, well, it's, you know, great culture was produced in this language and this theater existed and it's important. And I think I probably went on for like five minutes. He got me to where I needed to be. He turned to me and said, you know, there are worse things to worry about in life. So I hope you're happy with your choice and I wish you good luck. <laughs> so that, that was a, 
I mean, I, I like to remember it as a positive um, experience and, you know, people questioning my, my desire to write about um, tests and research it in depth. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm too deep into it right now. So I need to finish this <laughs> writing about this. It's not going to be perfect because I don't have the archives of the theater, but I'm going to give it my best shot. So. <laughs> Well, maybe we can talk more about the uh, yeah. Jewish community in Bukharest. Uh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Hi. Oh, okay. Okay. Hi. Uh, my name is Emil. I was born in uh, Bukharest in 1980, so I'm quite young, and I can comment on what uh, the question about how Jews think about Yiddish theater because we've been uh, much less like, suspicious <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> and, uh, a part of the Jewish community. I know. Uh, Aurel Weiner is the head of the Jewish community, is my relatives. I met Maya Morgenstern on uh, Temple Choral. So what can I say about Yiddish theater? Um, you know, if, if you speak, you speak in Romanian. So you say that to every ask. So it's like Jewish theater. Don't say that to Limba Yiddish, the Limba Yiddish or something like this. So it's more Jewish theater right now. Um, um how how they think about it i i can tell you something like uh, you know my, my grandmother was originally a jewish from bukarest so she didn't know yiddish so well but my grandfather was from uh, stefanest stefanest you know we're laughing on them he just came from uh, from a hole you know uh, from a state so people who came to bukarest from the state they went more to the Jewish theater, they have a deep connection to Yiddish, you know, like, uh, from the home they came, from the shtetl they came, they spoke basically only Yiddish. They also continued to speak Yiddish at their homes, and they went to Yiddish theater, and they like it, but what I can say, like, my grandmother she was more, she was more educated, she was speaking French, and she was saying about my grandma, about my grandfather, you know, he's going to, I don't know how to say it in English, but Tato de Revista, it's like a cheap theater, just songs and with it. I, I, I don't think it's true, okay? But I don't know, okay? She said he's going to Tato de Revista, like he's looking at you know, young girls dancing on the stage. It's like, it, it's not culture. And another thing I remember, she was saying, Really, it's it, it's difficult to translate. You know, Romanian is a, such an, uh, an amazing language, and when I speak English, it, you cut me like half of the words. And um, and she said, "You look, it's like he likes this actor. I don't remember the name. Like, like, like Bodo. Okay, let's say Bodo. Young Kale Bodo is very famous in Israel. So yeah, it's like going to say what you, what you, um." What you said is right about uh, we're going to see the star. If it's my mortgage, it's my mortgage. Then it was another star, I don't know, Carol Feldman, whatever. So she was saying, hey, she's just going to see Jan Kalebodo, Skalambayala. I don't know how to translate. Pulling faces. Okay, yeah, it's like a Skalambayala, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's okay, it's Yiddish theater, but it, it's, it's a low culture, it's not really theater. It's like people go to hear Yiddish and go out. Uh, that's what I remember. <laughs> I also was in the Yiddish theater and I don't remember when, beginning of uh, 2000s maybe. We were speaking in Yiddish, but you know, it wasn't that. I'm speaking Yiddish from home. So it wasn't that, you know, like you feel it. It's, it's not the same, but it was nice. And <laughs> I enjoyed that. And I was uh, on last November in Bucharest, and actually the, the building where I cook abandoned. I don't know what was really empty. I, I, I know where it is, you know, I know where it is. It's like you go from Temple Coral, it's like you have Kalarash, and you go and you, yeah, you do Barash Street, and it, it looks abandoned. I don't know, during the day, maybe <laughs> the night <laughs> it's more populated, but I try to see if something is going on there and abandoned. <laughs> That's my comment about uh, what I know. Um, so for the Romanian, I'm from here, but you know, but but some words are uh, impossible to translate in English for me. And like it's Kalambayale, exactly. Like okay, it's it's Yiddish theater, nice people go there. And ah, and another remark about Communist Party. 
it wasn't very good for a communist maybe, but what it means dangerous. I don't think, I don't think someone will go to jail because of Yiddish fiat or something. You know, like let's put it in, I, I know some of my grandmother, her brother was a communist in the communist party. He like maybe won't go to shield on Yom Kippur or something, but okay, does it look good? Maybe at the work they're making, uh, uh, let's say it, the mascara. I don't, I don't think so. You know, like, I think it may hurt his career or something. That's it. Okay, sorry. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, I am muted still? No. No, no, you're good. No, because my computer says you are muted. <laughs> and I don't think it's true. <laughs> uh, yes, I would like to um, also talk a little bit about the Jewish community in Bucharest, because I remember uh, that synagogue there, it was a very, very lively synagogue, a very nice atmosphere, and it had all sorts of Jews. Uh, Sephardi, uh, Reform, uh, Conservative, Orthodox, and Jews for Jesus. <laughs> even all Jews, like even Jews for Jesus, which I didn't, would not expect them to be there. They were there and the discussions were amazing. And uh, the after party, after Shabbat services was just great. So I would say maybe p these people would make audience for the Yiddish theater because uh, that was that's the advantage of having a small Jewish community that is not spread out. Like here in San Diego, everybody lives far away, and the people don't come together in this way, like in Europe. You know what I'm trying to say? Uh, some of these European communities are tighter and just have a different. It has a different feel to it. This uh, this Russia, this uh, Romanian Jewish community, I would yeah. say. I, I can unfortunately not comment on any of the community events and because I I was never part of that. I was never, um, I mean, I, I visited um, the, the Coral Temple and I visited, you know, the synagogues that have now been transformed into museums, but just as like, like you visit a museum, right? I mean, I didn't, I didn't participate in, in service or anything, so. I can comment about uh, hi. I can comment about the um, the community. Uh, it's not surprising actually that they are both Ashkenazi Jews and uh, and the Sephardi Jews in room in in the synagogue because actually in uh, in Romania there were always two kinds of uh, very surprise not actually surprisingly two kinds of um, communities. Uh, the, the majority were Ashkenazi Jews and there was a very small. Um, uh, Sephardi uh, Jews, uh, a community of Sephardi Jews. So this is not surprising about the the Jews who believe in the Messiah. This is something totally different. This is should be something totally new. They exist also here in Israel. So this is just a comment. Uh, yes, and the performances uh, I remember from what I saw, uh, amazing group work on stage. How people moved, they may maybe had some very good choreographer who was directing them because the group work, the, the, how they moved as a group was impressive um, in certain performances, not all of them. And also when they were, I feel like um, Corinna said, when they were performing in Romanian versus in Yiddish, uh, actors sometimes performed better. I had a feeling, I had a feeling that Yiddish was a burden for them. I mean, nowadays, yeah. the, um, you know, you don't even have the, the headphones anymore. So you just have the, the translation above the, the stage, so like in an opera house. Um, you have the Romanian translation above. And I believe it's since 2017, they've also introduced uh, the translation in, in, in English. So I assume that that's also happening for the performances in Romanian, that there will then be... Um, you know, translated for um, for non-Romanian speaking audiences, um, if there are any in, in the theater. So, um, but mm -hmm. the, the one performance that I saw that was the sort of the, the 
hot topic of the discussion in 2017. That was a debug performance. Um, and it seemed to me that the, it was in Yiddish, um, but at least the performance that I saw um, was, it, it didn't seem to me that the, the interest and the stress was on the language. It was on, on the whole performance and, and the staging and um, sort of the, the very modern staging of, of a classical text. Uh, the music, the, the sort of the the, uh, the sound mm -hmm. was overpowering. So even if you wanted to hear what they were talking on stage, it was hard because of the um, sort of music or just the noises, the sound that was part of the uh, of the performance. So it's, to me, it seemed like they were relying on the fact that people were going to read. So you know whether the the sound effects overpowered the language on stage or not was was not a concern because people were going to read and were going to understand anyway. So, um. well, but you still have these older people in the audience, right? Uh, I remember one play; there was some older woman um, in the audience, and she just saw a young girl on stage dancing and singing in Yiddish and she stood and clapped because it was so beautiful. She felt like this was the highlight of her life that she sees a young girl singing and dancing, you know, and using Yiddish language. So I, I think mean, they I'm, are I'm, still there in the audience. Yeah, some of them are. I mean, uh, the, the last official um, uh, census in Romania, I think, has 642 people who mm. declare Yiddish as their native, th their mother tongue, right? So, um, and the, the number for the community is, I think somewhere around 3,500, maybe a little bit more. Um, so it is, it is a small community and an even smaller Yiddish speaking community, let's say, speak, well, like, you know, people who have some sort of command of Yiddish. Um, I mean, in, in the census, they, they declared it their mother tongue, so I assumed that they would master the language, but I mean, right? so the community is small in, in Romania. It's, it's nothing compared to what it used to be. So. No, for sure, for sure. But who knows, maybe, um, you know, Zoom <laughs> could bring the <laughs> Romanian theater to Yiddish audiences uh, elsewhere, you know, <laughs> and especially mm -hmm. I will, right after we finish, I'll go on the website of TESS myself and check out what they are doing on Zoom because I'm curious. Uh, but what they sounded like in Montreal, it didn't even sound like Yiddish. It wasn't that it was a Romanian accent. No. It was no. that it was something that they learned uh -huh. by Zoom. I, ha I looked at the super titles sometimes because I didn't know what they were saying. Okay. Yeah. The accent from so. here. We we are in Montreal and uh, we felt exactly the same way. We saw them twice. There were two, right? There were two Jewish theater festivals. Uh -huh. Did they come to both? I can't remember. I don't know. They definitely came, they came to, to one. Yes, I know. And, I mean, the set was lovely and it was very lively, but nobody could understand their Yiddish, which was very sad, actually because uh, yeah. yes it takes uh, a lot to learn and as we talked uh, we talked about this previously you have to sometimes make a choice do you want professional actors on stage who don't know Yiddish and have to learn the lines or you want non-actors amateurs who know Yiddish to perform that that's always the choice you have to make and um, I don't know, when I was doing directing, it was easier for me to work with the native speakers who are not yeah. actors, <laughs> frankly speaking. Um, but, but but it's everybody's it's, choice, individual choice. Here in Montreal, our Yiddish theater, which is kind of like in Romania now, there's very few plays put on in Yiddish language only. Um, 
a lot some of the a lot of the people are Jewish but they don't know Yiddish but they yeah. learn Yiddish and they sound very very good <laughs> so it is possible I guess to uh, I mean there was an attempt so um, what about uh, you speak about accents now I want to tell you I speak native Yiddish and I sometimes talk, spoke with Jews from Lithuania it was, it wasn't born in it maybe and like he couldn't understand me and he says you, you don't what is that accent it's like Arabic accent <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind of Yiddish are you speaking it, it, it's impossible you speak Yiddish and I look at him like I, I speak like 10 better than you I speak a fluent Yiddish but you know people have like concept of how Yiddish should sound and Yiddish in Bucharest and in Romania sound different than Yiddish in Poland. You know, like think, people thinking in the US about Yiddish from Poland, from Lithuania. It's a nice Yiddish, but it's not Yiddish from Romania. It would sound different. The A is different. The words you use are different. So, um, I don't know about the actors. I, don't, I never had them. I don't remember. But uh, taking different. account That's that cool. people would, sorry? wasn't a Romanian accent, it was a nothing memorized accent. It wasn't Maybe. that in Yiddish. Can you hear young say something? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe when I hear the accent they had in the US in the thirties, forties, okay, I understand it's Yiddish, but it's not my Yiddish. So I make the difference it's between it's not my Yiddish accent, it's not exactly what I'm used to here. And it's, but it's okay, it's same Yiddish. I don't know, I, I, I can't say about that, but you know, if you hear actors in Yiddish people in Israel, you hear that Yan Kalebodo and other, most of them came from Yiddish theater in Bucharest, actually. It's a bit different, like it's it's not the Yiddish you hear in, um, I don't know, from Moritz Schwartz. I mean, in general, I agree, there are big varieties. Yivo Yiddish and Bina Bin mm -hmm. Yiddish, these are different worlds. But there is a problem, right? Because um, there are not, is, are there any Yiddish instructors in Bucharest? So that's so, not a language that is taught at yeah, the I was, I was going to say that earlier. There was an yeah. attempt uh, in 2017. The theater um, brought um, somebody from, I believe, Holland. Um, who was himself a theater um, person, um, and he was supposed to help the, the, the ensemble with the language, so like teach them um, better pronunciation. Now, I don't know if he was going to teach them the language, but definitely work on pronunciation and enunciation in Yiddish. And um, uh, I believe Goldwasser was his name. Oh, and Rafi, I Rafi Goldwasser yes. from Strasbourg. Okay. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay, so you you know, so okay, friends. Okay, I, I was close, but not quite. <laughs> um, but and I know he he staged some of his own shows uh, with Tess, but I have no sense of how much he worked with the with the actors on their language skills and and what came of that. And I'm not sure whether he's still there or not. So, um, um, but I mean, with with um, what the previous speaker was saying about the differences in, in you know, accents and, and uh, sort of the geographical differences in, in Europe between you know, what the, the more Nordic um, countries and, and the countries around Romania. I don't think that that is necessarily the problem because a lot of the people um, learned their, I mean, the ones who learned the Yiddish learned it like this one actress in summer schools. Right, summer school in Warsaw or summer school in London or summer, you know, there's a Yiddish summer school in Berlin right now. I don't think that they teach dialect. I think that they teach, you know, what I would call Weinreich Yiddish uh, or Yivo Yiddish, you know, sort of a standard so that people can at least have that language. Just like, I mean, I speak German, but I speak standard German. I don't speak Bavarian, right? Mm -hmm. But when I speak German, you still understand that I speak German, right? Whereas sometimes with test performances, right? What's mm -hmm. on stage is, is not a clear language. <laughs> so, but Israela, you wanted to say something? Yeah, um, as a linguist, I can say that there, I mean, 
first of all, I, I know Emil, Emil who's, who spoke <laughs> earlier, and I heard his Yiddish, and it doesn't sound like Romanian Yiddish. Emil, I'm just saying. I heard your Yiddish. I met you once. I, we met. We didn't meet, but we... I don't we remember. I don't remember. Again, we, we attended the class of Miriam Trin, so I remember your Yiddish. Uh -huh. I can. I can. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, your English is not, I mean, it's not the English word, the Romanian Yiddish, I think that uh, as a lingua, I mean, I'm not an ex, I'm not a phonologist or, a, or, or doing anything with the phonetics, but I can say that um, accent has to do um, it, it, to, to, it, with the fact that you, uh, you feel the language in the sense that it's inherent, it's inherent. For example, I'm not an, a native English speaker, as, it, as you can, can 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 see but you know i whatever i say i understand so i kind of adopt to what what the accent should be and what i think happened happened and happened in romania that in the past the the actors were native native uh, yiddish speakers not necessarily well most of them weren't born in bucharest but in the surrounding like in yash or in Chernobyl, and mm -hmm. there the Yiddish was their native tongue, and the uh, Romanian uh, was was uh, at best the third the third language that they mastered, and some of them spoke both Yiddish and German, and in that sense uh, there was I mean they felt the language, they felt the language, and which wasn't the case uh, with many of the. Um, the actors who originated from Bucharest, where the Yiddish was not their native tongue, they spoke Romanian at home, and I, I, I've met some of them. They spoke Romanian at home. The Yiddish was different. It was well, a kind of a Romanian Yiddish, and now obviously, if people, I mean, they don't live, they don't feel that Yiddish is part of their identity, and they are, they are not Jews, so. Um, uh, the, the, the consequence of that is a kind of a, a Romanian as Yiddish, which is not what an Yiddish, but, um, um, and I heard Yiddish like this, but it, it's not your Yiddish, Emil. Your okay. Yiddish is I can understand it perfectly. <laughs> Man, Bob, <Okay>. to this. Yeah. <laughs> Elizabeth or Yale, they want to say something? Can you unmute yourself? Because I can't unmute you for some reason. I can ask you to unmute. <laughs> am I hello? Am I unmuted? Yes. Ah. So I just came in just a few minutes ago from errands and I heard the conversation a little bit. <laughs> I just uh, wanted to add uh, some personal experiences. I, I had the pleasure of meeting one of the uh, the tests, as you call it, the the Interstate Theater of Romania, I got to live with Israel Berkovich in his home. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, uh, and be with him and his wife and be with uh, several people, including Leona Waldman, who was a wonderful actress there one of the original Yiddish speaking actresses there. So I'm hearing all this thing about la language, language. And um, um, it's true, as the person just said before, the actors at that time when I was meeting in the 80s were not, they were living in Bucharest, but many of them came, and not just in the, um, the North Moldavia, but actually some actually came from Mara Morris and some came from Transylvania. We don't want to think that because we think Transylvania was so Hungarian and eyes, modernized, but there's, they were actually actors. I remember talking that their original home was actually, as they would say, Koloshvar, or they would actually say Klausenberg would be the Yiddish way of saying it. Um, and I also had the opportunity to meet the dramaturge because, you know, before the Yiddish theater in, in Bucharest, where was it? It was in Yash, and it was there until 1960, 61. And I met the man who was the original. And matter of fact, met, he was my friend. I lived with him off and on many for, when I would travel back and forth all the way until he passed in 2000 to Romania. And that was, of course, uh, Yitzhak uh, Karashvarts, who was the main dramaturge 
of, so if you're talking about language, he was the man who dealt with language. Uh, and they even did it down in Bucharest. And um, it was interesting how he dealt with translations, uh, Romanian to Yiddish and so forth. And um, I asked him once, I said, how do you choose uh, what uh, dialect do you want the actors to speak? And he said, well, if they, he, it was interesting, was if they're coming from a background of Yiddish speaking, I just, if they always speak some Yiddish or a little Yiddish or good Yiddish or uh, fluent or not fluent, but something, whatever that is, how they speak it, he says, I don't change it. That is already what they speak. Even if it's broken, it's already unconscious there. I'm not the one to say no, say the word like this, because I want the feeling of the sentiment of what's being written by the actor to come first, not to be thinking, oh, I have to say it like this. It should be about the action, what is being said, not in terms of the ooh versus the e or the you know ve versus the vi vivo whatever. And that was interesting. And this is the dramaturge. The dramaturge, Itzhakara Schwartz, who at, in, in his lifetime was considered, if you know anything about him, the leading Romanian Jewish folklorist in the world. Read and spoke and wrote easily six, seven languages. I was in his home when he was back with a camera crew speaking French, Yiddish, Hebrew, Russian, English, and he never dropped a beat because we're all in this room. There's all these different people. Um, when the theater was in Yash and there was an, a person that didn't know Yiddish, he told me, I spoke a very little, or a non-Jew, because we think, well, did non-Jews act in the Yiddish theater before uh, the, you know, before there were very few Jews or before the wall came down? And he said, yes, there were non-Jews in the Yiddish theater, you know, just like Jews played in the Romanian theater. Why should we be so ja so shocked? that they're speaking Romanian and playing on the big stage. So he said there were non-Jews. And so he says, when I was teaching them, he said, I taught them the Moldavian accent. He says, I wasn't going to go the, Lit the Litvish. He says, I'm taking with, with the local people because he said, I wanted people to hear it local speak so they could feel it. So he felt that it was Hamish because he said, this is a theater for the people, the local environs. He said, people from Bucharest weren't driving to Yash. People from... Koloshvar, Klausenberg, Cluj weren't driving. Who was driving? Bota Shan, um, uh, you know, people from Roman, uh, people from Dorohoi, people from Siret, uh, people from Stefanash. He said, in those environments, and what Yiddish did they hear if they heard it? Including, and this was as interesting, including the non Jews. What Yiddish did they hear? They heard the Moldavisha. So he said, I'm not going to be the one to say, no, Lithuanian, we got to do that. He says, eh. he said to me, now this is me saying that, that's a bunch of BS. It makes no sense. They don't care about literal Alashi Yiddish. They want to hear what they've grown up hearing Jews or even themselves speak. Because I met non-Jewish musicians, not one or two, several who spoke a very... A zer git, a git Yiddish, a zer git Yiddish, um, and so that's just interesting. So that's just my little 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 information to say from from one of the greatest dramaturges of the Yiddish theater who was there um, in when it after the war and it reformed itself and and they and they built it and then even worked up. He worked up until uh, I, uh, what was it? His ninety second, ninety third year. I saw him like six months before he passed in the year 2000. So that just a little bit about languages from the people that I met who told me. So thank you. It's interesting. Well, thank you, Yale. Very interesting to hear from people who had interesting encounters in Romania. And I'm no, I know you are one of them. <laughs> uh, because, yeah, well, yeah, wasn't the story that you were supposed to become a lawyer and then you went to Romania and... <laughs> You're yes. not a lawyer because of that. Romania. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I know you have a very deep personal connection to Romania. Yeah, including, uh, hi, uh, well, uh, including yeah. Elizabeth, my wife. Her yichus is Romanish. Right, right, right. 
Mm-hmm. What I wanted to say about how we spoke in the theater, I remember I was in, um, you say, yours, not yours. You know, I was in yours. So went there to a synagogue and I spoke with some old Jew. Um, it was in Romanian, but you know, we spoke English fluently. Exactly. In yours, if he's a old Jew, he, he almost uh, surely speaks Yiddish at some level. And we were talking and say, I don't want to speak Yiddish with you because I'm not speaking a cultural Yiddish like in the theater. <laughs> um, there is a difference between how you speak uh, uh, even in Yas on, on the street and how you speak in the theater because for them, for them to speak in the theater, what he said it was like to speak a cultural Yiddish. It's, it's not Yiddish, it's not uh, Weinreich. Um, but you know, they, they don't spoke with the comets, they say Vassar, not Vassar, and um, all kind of other nuances. Uh, um, so for them, uh, the, the, the cultural Yiddish was in the theater, they never heard about uh, uh, a Litvak. They just don't have a clue. Wow. Yes, amazing. Uh, you should come to our uh, Lion Christ someday. We had, um, now we're doing this Black Lives Matter topic, so we alternated the speaker. But um, most of the time we have a speaker who speaks uh, Ukrainian Yiddish. Tote uh, Mome. Very, very interesting yeah. to, to listen to him. Mm-hmm. There is a big difference between the Nivo Yiddish and dialects, and I think it's the time to open up the Yiddish, Yiddish education for for dialects too. Yeah. Because we, we do have people here in San Diego even uh, who speak Polish Yiddish and um, Romanian Yiddish, all sorts of Yiddish. So we should um, encourage them not to be ashamed that they don't speak academic Yiddish. I heard that comment lots of times too, <laughs> but to share their dialects with us because they are just gorgeous. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Do you have anything else to add, Corina? Or are there any other questions? I, mean, I can just um, add a tiny um, detail. Um, the, the theater actually existed first in Bucharest as a state institution. So from 1948 until the present. That's mm-hmm. that's the one that was created in, in Bucharest. Um, between 1949 and 1961, um, you do have uh, a, a Jewish state theater in Yash, which which you know was the, supposed to be the Yiddish theater in Yash. Um, but that one closes in, in the early 60s because um, of a lack of audiences. And everyone who was still there and was associated with the with the theater in Yash actually comes down to Bucharest and works on on, on um, you know, bettering the, the ensemble there and, and bringing their expertise to the Eucharist. Mm-hmm. Well, great. Yes, but uh, we, so before the Yiddish theater was a state institution. Then there were was, yeah. troops everywhere, right? Precisely. And so that's. Exactly. Yeah, I, I don't think anyone will question Yash's position as, <laughs> you know, the cradle of, at least not in Romania, not in the Romanian sort of mindset or or discourse about the origins of the Yiddish theater. So that's that's there because Eminescu wrote about it. So. Right. Well, thank you so much, Corina. It was a pleasure. Thank Good you. Good luck with I'm your so- research. I'm sorry about the technical difficulties. So. Well, it's okay. Uh, we can't predict these things. I'm glad we've, we've solved them because that's what matters. If they're solved, it's all good. Oh, one person asking the chat. Yeah, one person. Yes. Okay. Yes, Nama. Go ahead. I'm just <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, one person asked in the chat um, how they can donate. So I put the link. So the description of our fundraiser says that we're trying to build a house of Yiddish land, but now there is so much interest in the community that we're actually looking for uh, to, bu- to buy some land and to build a bigger institution that would be shtetl-like and um, have various buildings, a few buildings instead of just one building. So the project is growing. I will update it and let you know. 
And I would like to invite you to our other activities. We have something every single day for both Yiddish speakers and non-Yiddish speakers. Uh, we have classes and then the next big event is um, the class, I think it's on uh, June 12th. Uh, it will be a reading of uh, Yiddish poems written about racism in America. Uh, that will be an interesting uh, topic. And if you would like to come, you can RSVP. I'm putting my email address in the chat. Uh, you and know, it's funny. I was in San Diego four times in my life uh, for business trips, but, uh -huh. never, <laughs> but never knew something in this year in San Diego. Uh, I didn't realize San Diego is a city because it's, it's squared. No. Where's the city? Where's the city? <laughs> it is a city uh, with, yeah, a Stadt mit Stettler. And yes. It's not all the Schwarze Jurek. For you, schon, schon, ich sehe nicht gestört. Nein, das ist nicht so. <laughs> it is growing. It is growing, and I think uh, yeah. there are lots of Yiddish speakers here and lots wow. of interest in Yiddish. So it's a good wow. location I, um, for it, such an institution. It's funny. It's, it's funny. I was four times in my life in San Diego. You, you imagine, I live in Tel Aviv, San Diego. Mm -hmm. People never heard about San Diego. No, <laughs> San Diego. And I was four times in San Diego. <laughs> I was there are lots four, of uh, like Israelis. Me. Lots of Israelis here in San Diego because yeah, of the weather, yeah. they like it. <laughs> you know, I know, I know. I walked with Israelis in San Diego and I was in San Diego for weeks, like not, not for days, for weeks. I was like, uh, once I was one week, another time two weeks, another time another week. I, I was, I had plenty of time to see the speak Yiddish with everybody, to learn, learn and guys was, was my will, not was my will. But, I didn't know about it, nothing. And now it was not just and got into San Diego. <laughs> well, someday this. after the Magefa is over, we will also Magefa. have some summer program or something bigger yeah, happening. Yeah. And then hopefully we'll all meet in person at some point. Yeah, <laughs> that see, would it's be a great. small world. Oh, absolutely. We can, uh, we can see, especially when it comes to Yiddish speakers and <laughs> Yiddish enthusiasts, it's a very small world. Yeah. Okay, a schönen Dank. Uh, a großen Dank. Uh, I already okay. see Corinna, look at the uh, Facebook. Co Corinna is here? Mulsumesk. Mulsumesk. There is somebody, somebody posted a comment with some resources for you. So look okay. on Facebook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a großen Dank. Thank you very much. And see you next time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good night. Uh, we have a night here. <laughs> A good Shabbos. For us, it's a good Shabbos. Shabbos. Oh, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.